and the fir- that's the first time in 40 plus episode 45 plus episodes that you've said hello and welcome hopefully back to got some a wine podcast uh, with myself angus o'loughlin a wine lover ex-radio guy but sitting next to me is master sommelier carlos santos 15 years as an ms or in wine working across the world in michelin star uh, restaurants with gordon ramsay you worked with gordon yeah did you see Absolutely. him much um, every now and then, every now and then, it will, got a lot it, will, of it will show up. It will show up. Yeah. It will show up every now and then. But um, would you but get this nervous is picking this wine for Gordon? Uh, I wasn't picking wine at that time. Okay. I was, I was a baby, baby sommelier back then. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let the big boys do it. But now he's the big dog, That's it. and he sits at this podcast studio with me as we try and find the best bottle of wine under thirty bucks. Uh, but this particular wine is a Pic Poule de Pinet, which is uh, um, a wine that you see in the Languedoc, so a little bit more south central of France, rather than Cotes Catalana, very close to Spain. But um, but a wine that you see in every restaurant on the coast in the southern France. You match this with seafood and salads, and uh, very versatile summer and oaked. So uh, yeah, but but a top producer that it's uh, you know typically organic and biodynamic and almost a little natural, no finding, no filtration. Um, they tend to be quite expensive. Uh, they're top wines, but uh, but very underrated. Even though they're still a little bit more on the premium side, they're still underrated when you compare to a Penfolds Grange or a Lafitte yeah, Rothschild. You know course. those big guys, of course. Very so cool. Because I just picked this at random because it looked interesting, and I knew that it was a wine that we hadn't had on the podcast before. Have we had this grape? What is this grape variety? Uh, Pick pull, pick pull. The we haven't had that before. No, we have not. Oh, no. that's awesome. It's, uh, well, but that's the cool thing as well about it is that you are uh, learning so much and so fast that uh, mm-hmm. every time I see a new podcast, um, it's like, oh man, Angus is talking like a professional oh well one. thank you so sir here we go we'll see if it um th- this could be kind of one of their uh, second levels as in uh, they have the mas de domas gasac which is a top wine uh and then they buy a little bit of grapes in uh, in the languedoc to make this you know a, a wine like this which is versatile imagine you go to their wine estate and uh and they have the top wine and and they serve you this as an yeah. aperitif so tell me when I'm wrong, Carlos. It's the big pout. <laughs> big pool. Big pool. Oh, that's an L. Okay. Sorry for laughing. It looks like a tea. That looks like a tea. Look at the the right. fancy that's running. That's right. The big pool de pinet. Big pool de pinet. Uh, from Moulin. Moulin de Gassac. Moulin de Gassac. Okay. Very good. All right. Very good. Um, first thing to notice here is that it is well, you know, to make a comparison to uh, the Muscadet from a few mm-hmm. weeks ago, mm-hmm. that was a pale gold. This is a gold. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I think the previous one was pale lemon. It was so pale lemon, sorry, watery. Sorry. It, it was, was so, lemon. so watery. While this one is a, a pale gold color. There's yes. a tone of gold to it, which will tell us what, Angus? Uh, warmer vintage? Yeah. Warmer vintage or a Maybe. little bit more ripeness. Yep. And what about the region itself? Just a beautiful place to go and visit, you know? <laughs> uh, With gold tones. Yeah, postcard <laughs> stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, definitely put it on your bucket list when you go to France to get that Mediterranean air. Uh, what else can the colour tell us, Carlos? I mean, you said it was unoaked. That's kind of... Yeah. But, you know, that I kind of... I always think about when I think gold, I always think Chardonnay and oak. Yeah. But so. just the region itself as well. Like, uh, it's a little bit warmer, more ripeness, less disease pressure. The waters are much more calm than in the Atlantic. What else is there to assess on the appearance, apart from knowing that it's a pale gold? Uh, I think the legs. If you if you notice the legs, there's a lot more uh, running legs than there were, for example, on the previous wine that we've tried the, of a similar style. The, the Muscadet. The, the Muscadet. A few weeks ago. Uh, because also there's more legs on this, so therefore a little bit more alcohol. And on the nose, well, before the nose actually even. But uh, um, yeah, it feels like there's a little bit more to it on the nose. Uh, sorry, well, on, the, on the appearance. On the appearance. Excuse yeah. me. Excuse me. Um, Another thing about big pool. Well, I think you can break it down uh, as we as we taste, but I'm, I'm excited to to smell in the nose. Me too. Hmm. It's not as, and this is where Carlos is going to say, oh, maybe it's too cold in the glass. <laughs> it's not. Oh, that as... That was the first thought for sure. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> this wine's been out for like 30, 45 minutes. This wine is as. 
No, it's, it's just not... the style. It's just the style, or, um, the style of the grape variety. You know, the, the, as, and that's what I was just about to start uh, saying. Is that Pic Pool de Pinay is typically uh, in this particular region. Uh, you will have it on its own, Pic Pool de Pinay, because it is youthful. It, I mean, it's meant to be youthful, young, easy to enjoy at the beginning of a meal as an aperitif, seafood, salad, etc. Yeah. Um, I'm still getting surprisingly. I'm getting apple, but it's a yellow apple. Yeah, much riper apple than what we've seen on a Muscadet, for example. By or comparison. Rieslings of past, of course. Or, correct. Yeah, yellow apple. There's a there's a sense of um, bit of like minerality. Dusty, yeah, that's right. So that's a minerality, dusty or uh, rocky. Um, it feels like it feels like crushed rock, uh, and there's that dustiness uh, coming into the wine. I feel that just on the nose. It feels like a, a um, brine or um, almost, um, how do you say, uh, a seasoning, almost a seasoning for a salad kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of, without giving away a lot, it's it's interesting, the smell. It's not too complex as in when I don't feel like, you know, we're diving through, you know, oh, well, white flower, oak. Mm. It's just, it's quite one dimensional, but it yep. is interesting in what it is. Can we give this a little taste on the palate, yep. please. Let's do it. Cheers again. Cheers. I will, I will start with, uh, with yeah. a pairing. I will go with cheese for this one. Oh. You know, you see the, um, fr um it almost like this, like cheese rind. There's a, um, there's a cheese rind uh, taste to it, a little bit of malolactic. I don't think this one is fully full on malolactic, but there's a surge of creaminess to the palate. Um, even though it's meant to be quite fresh, acidity is quite lifted. But there's a sense of cheese rind, washed cheese kind of thing, uh, which is which is quite pleasant. Acidity is still quite elevated, but yeah, it, I, I feel the alcohol and the warmth. Though. Uh, the, well, let's do our assessment. We've got our structures. Let's do it. It is. Uh, it's not a high acid wine, but is it medium plus? Mm. Mm. I'm more towards uh, medium. It's like okay. um, I think it's medium acid. Uh, I would love to see a little bit more lifted freshness in his wine. I think it's just medium acid. And then, you know, you, you we say ripe apple uh, and yellow apple. Uh, that on itself alone does not have very high acidity as well. So I think those things go kind of together. So medium acid. And the body is light. The um, alcohol is yeah. interesting. Alcohol is quite warming, but uh, alcohol is quite warm. Uh, which which is not super pleasant on a wine, I think. It could use a little bit more acidity and a lower degree of alcohol. Um, but um, that would make it a lot more balanced. Uh, yeah, so not, not overly not overly interesting. I think it's, you know, uh, a food wine. You will need food for this. Um, mm. Body body is quiet, mouth coating. I don't think it's super light. I think it's medium body. Everything is pretty much on a medium. Uh, part of the alcohol that, well, it's actually medium as well, but it's only 12.5%, but it feels more than that. Yeah. It just needs a little bit more structure, I think. It's funny you say that because you said it needs food, and the first, that's the first time in 40-plus 40 episodes, 45-plus episodes, that you've said the food first because yeah. the usually the wine is like the star and then we think about food but you're like straight away, this needs food. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's funny because I think it's maybe not the most uh, fair um, maybe judgment of the wine and then again knowing the producer i think you if you if we have a cheese planter uh, some washed rind cheese and some hard paste cheese i think this would this would actually roll really really well uh, a salad with avocado even though the wine doesn't have a super lifted acidity but uh, a green salad and avocado and some tuna why not uh, would go and olives why not uh, would work really really well um, so, so if you live on the Gold Coast and you listen to our podcast on a UE boom or a portable speaker while the sun is setting on that little mm. gorgeous moment but where the grass meets the sand and you lay down a picnic rug with your love you put Carlos and I you know into your atmosphere in that moment Make sure you take some cheese with you. Uh, this probably yeah. isn't the wine just to sit there and have a couple of glasses out of uh, some plastic cups so the cops don't pull you over. 